Hey yo, what is up FPG fam? Further here and welcome back to another Aether Gazer video. It is time to go ahead and talk about Luliang, show off my build, go over some gameplay and showcasing and talk about her as a whole. Now, I do apologize for this video being late, but if you've been on the streams, you know the struggle when it comes to how I was trying to get this modifier online because I was waiting for this last sigil, this last nibble right here, and I had to wait for the hazard zone cleaning to refresh and that takes days unfortunately and that's another reason why i want it to be reworked because when you have two modifiers that you're trying to build up at the same time for this example gung chen and lu liang that dropped a week apart the resources are at a bare minimum they're scarce it is tough out here in the streets when it comes to that so i had to wait and it took some time but we're here now i digress we're gonna go ahead and talk about her once again i'm gonna give you my thoughts and how i feel about this modifier go over the entire build and jump into some gameplay and showcasing before we do though i've been getting some questions about luliang herself i know we get a lot of new players joining the game every day asking if they should pull for her now i talked about this in a separate video of must pulls and prioritizing certain modifiers i'll leave it linked at the end of this video for you to check out but i have a lot of people asking should we you know go for luliang should we go for hell that's here or should we go for Gung Chen or should we be saving? I'll be quite honest with you with Lu Liang. She is very niche. She's tons of fun. I'm going to talk about her some more and I do really enjoy her, but she is niche in the aspect that she is dedicated really to win teams. So if you're trying to main Ying Zhao, you love the Thor Osser team, or you're trying to have Meng Zhang pop off a little bit more, then of course you'll want Lu Liang. Or if you just really like this modifier in general, then yeah, of course, go for Lu Liang. In terms of Hell, I, I think she's a great modifier. I think she does tremendous amount of damage, but you can wait on her. If you're a new player, you're just joining the game and you haven't gotten Gung Chen yet, I think she's a fantastic pickup. She is very good for the Tianwan Gen Zone. She's just really good in of herself because of all of uh, her utility that she brings to the table. So I think Gung Chen is a phenomenal pickup for you. Um, but if you're really trying to play into meta and play into, you know, trying to have the best account and have the best modifiers, I think Gung Chen's a quick pickup for you. And then you save for Mitsuha and Izanami. You should have enough. Now, if you want to guarantee you get Mitsuha and Izanami, then just start saving now, right? That's probably my recommendation. But once again, I'll have that video linked at the end of this one. I uh, went on a bit of a tangent there, but I just want to go ahead and address that because I've been getting that question a lot. Anyways, let's go ahead and go back over to Lu Liang and talk about her. I really like this modifier a lot. I know I spoke about her in my first impressions and my thoughts and opinions on her. Where I just tried her out in the trial. Uh, she's far more fun than I thought she was going to be, and I enjoy her a lot more than I thought I was going to. She's just, you know, spamming skills. I love doing that all over the place. I love that when it comes to modifiers in terms of her attack and how she plays. She plays very fluidly, and uh, she rides the weapon. She rides the board. It, it's very, very cool. Anyways, let's go over my build. So I have her at level 80, fully maxed out, 24% crit rate, 56% crit damage, and then you see the rest of the stats there. Uh, we go over to the skills um, all maxed out now her skills are pretty straightforward i'm not gonna lie to you as you can see there's not a whole lot of text here just doing wind damage for the most part now it's when we get the skill three where we get the paragraph and the essay all you really know is that she gains fortune after her uh, basic attack you can do the follow-up attack with skill three after skill one you can and after skill two you can um, and then each one subsequently does more damage and gains more fortune. You want to get max fortune so that way you can do the most amount of wind damage and then buff the team or I should say the wind damage of the team by 10% for 16 seconds. Um, and then with each fortune expended, this wind damage boost further increases by 0.6%. So you want to get max fortune and then be able to do uh, the skill three when you have it available. Uh, and that's when you fill up the board. Uh, you'll see it above the health bar. So that is skill three. Um, really nice. And then the ultimate is really good as well. It's doing a whole lot. Lucky coin, wind damage. And then it is providing wind resistance shred to the enemies by 18% for three seconds. So the ultimate is a really solid ultimate. I'm not going to lie to you. And then the ultimate skill chain with Gung Chen is pretty interesting. It's, uh, it's different, right? This ultimate skill chain cast only has a 1.6% chance of critting. And this chance of critting can't be influenced by other effects. Now, upon a successful crit, crit damage further increases by 40% and independent damage increases by 40%. That is pretty chunky. I'm not going to lie. Now, it's a small percentage to have it proc. But if it does proc, you're getting some pretty beefy buffs right there, right? And then the uh, lucky coin that follows her for 12 seconds when it creates. So, I, I do like the ultimate skill chain. It's a nice animation. And I can see you using Gung Chen with her um, from time to time, right? Because of the Tianwan Gen Zone. 
because of the ultimate skill chain if you want to mess around with it play around with it and have fun with it you certainly can but you're probably going to be using her more so in the uh thor thor Osser team um and just benefiting there but you can definitely do like a ying zhao when ying zhao comes out definitely do like a ying zhao um luliang and a gung chen i think that team will be pretty cool um so that's certainly something that you can play around with and try out if you want to moving over to the access key i don't have her signature functor we'll take a look at it here in just a second um i do have this one fully maxed out tier one this is the standard five star gen zone one for the tianwan gen zone it's pretty decent right but it's nowhere near her signature functor now i was on the fence of whether or not i was going to go for the signature functor i read it again before doing this video i think i'm going to go for it because it is just way too beneficial it does way too much and it is really good especially if you're trying to buff your wind damage dealer your dps i thought i was going to save and just get uh ying zhao's uh signature functor and call it a day there and i thought that would be enough but to be honest with you i think you really would want this one now is it a necessity no i've been getting by with the one that i have on her now and it's been working out fine but this one is if you're trying to be optimal, right? If you're trying to be meta, if you want that team to really, really pop off, whether that's the Thor Osser team or Ying Zhao or Meng Zheng, yeah, you definitely want to go ahead and get this. Or you, if you just like Luliang that much, right? But essentially, it's going to extend the duration of Lucky Coin by two seconds. The wind resistance debuff granted by Lucky Coin joint attack can be stacked up to eight stacks. That's huge. And then with each stack, further reducing enemy wind res by 1.6%. Massive, right? And then when the lucky coin effect ends, teammates restore 4% ultimate skill charge. I talked about this before. I think this is going to be really good just in general, but for the Thor Osser team, right? Because they want to do their ultimate as much as possible. And then an explosion detonates at the position where the mod followed by the lucky coin is dealing wind damage equal to 800% of attack in total. That's chunky, right? Enemies hit by the explosion will also be inflicted with armor break, reducing their defense by 6% for 12 seconds. It's, you can see it's starting to stack up, right? It's doing a whole lot of stuff. That's just quality of life, extra support, extra stuff going on here, right? Extra damage. When the final strike of Evil Expeller, which is the skill three hits, the remaining cooldown of the mod's ultimate skill will be reduced by 0.4 seconds. Massive. Once again, for the Thor Osser team, huge. And then gain 10 fortune when casting an ultimate skill or an ultimate skill chain. So you're getting fortune. It's just doing way too much, right? And it's far and away better than anything else you can put on her in terms of a functor. So it's huge. Once again, is it a necessity? No, I don't I don't think you have to have it. Um, but is it extremely good to have? Yeah. But if you are unable to get it for whatever reason, then you can go with this one. And that'll be perfectly fine. If you don't have that one for whatever reason, I think this one is passable. You can definitely use this one or usable, I should say, for the extra armor break. Right. And you can transcend five, hopefully. And this will be this will be good. Right. That, that'll work for you. You don't have to have the signature functor. Um, but if you do, you can see it's far and away the best thing you can put on her. And that's part of the course with most of these modifiers, right? Moving over to the sigils, I do have what they recommend. And I think it's just the best in slot for, uh, one, three, and five, the fortunes, and then four, five, and six for the nibble. And for the reasons it should be obvious, right? Um, increases ultimate skill charge speed. That's what we want by 30% because of the ultimate, all that benefits that you get from it. And then ultimate skill damage by 30%. Right, very nice. And then, of course, all the wind support that you get from the fortunes. If we move over to the skill effect, 737. Decent, not the best, but it is what it is. I don't know if I'm going to mid-max because I really want to start focusing on Ying Zhao now, getting prepared for her. I don't know if she's going to be dropping in 7 days or 14 days, most likely 14 days. Um, but I want to start hoarding materials now because I don't want the same thing to happen with Luliang that it may happen with Ying Zhao, where I just don't have the materials to build her up and I'm waiting days because... The re it needs to be reworked um so to avoid all of that and hopefully have ying Zhao online day one uh, i'm gonna start hoarding materials hoarding warps that's why i don't have any warps in her as well just because um yeah i'm trying to hoard materials not only that i'm actually trying to get my living solo cyrus online even more um let me know if you want me to do a like another showcase for her i'm getting the warps there it's it's a grind i'm telling you it's a grind i got her all level 60 reconstructed here and then i do have level two on the synchro buff right and and that's really nice so i'm trying to get living solo cyrus online if you want to see a video for her let me just let me know in the comments down below so the warps is probably going to be on the back burner for luliang because i'm going to focus on ying Zhao and still need to complete um still need to complete living solo cyrus moving on to the aether code i'm going yellow 
for the benefits that you can see here i think yellow is really good um red i think red is really good as well uh you have some interesting benefits here that you can mess around with that i want to test out and then um blue's pretty decent right blue's pretty decent uh but i do like the yellow i think yellow is really really solid for her. um so that is my luliang as a whole once again, I think she's fantastic. I think she's a lot of fun. I think she's niche in the aspect that it's going to be really relegated and dedicated to wins, you know, teams and uh, benefiting and buffing win DPSs. But um, all in all, she's just way more fun than I thought she was going to be. Anyways, with that being said, let's go ahead and hop in to probably some Omega has his own cleaning just to give a quick showcase. And I'll uh, see you guys over there. Okay, hopefully the controller's connected. Hopefully we're not having any technical difficulties. Controller's connected. Let's go. So what I try and do mainly is the uh, skill 2. Let's go ahead and do their ultimate skill chain. I try and do skill 2 as much as possible because that's where you're getting the mo most benefits, in my opinion, in terms of damage and fortune and all that good stuff. But, you know, you can weave in the skill 1 and... Um, be able to do that as well and you just want to try and get to the fortune um as quickly as possible maxing it out as quickly as possible as you can see we got it so we're gonna go ahead and pop it and then we're gonna go ahead and do the ultimate so now we're getting all the buffs we got the buffs we got the wind shred we got all the good stuff we're gonna go ahead and pop their ult now and this is how essentially you pop off with this team this team is incredibly fun and incredibly um strong now i would usually in this team recommend you um have living soul osiris on point if you um have her where she should be in terms of um you know her synchro buff and i need to double s her personally i don't have her double s obviously that's what i need to do um but if you have her double s and all that good stuff yeah she's popping off so you would run her on point thor and luliang would be the ai and you would just rock it that way, right? All right, let's go ahead and do that again. Beautiful. All right, let's do the skill three. All right, let's see how much damage we can get here. We're just going to be weaving this in. And you can see the skills are just spammable, right? Not bad. <laughs> not bad damage. I'm not going to lie to you. That's pretty good damage. And once again... My Luliang is nowhere near where she needs to be. My Osser needs to be uh, a little bit better in terms of damage and buffing. So, um, yeah, this team has a lot of work to do. And you can see they're they're still they're still strong, even as an incomplete team. Um, they're still pretty, pretty incredibly strong. And they have a lot of survivability with Thor, all of her invincibility frames and whatnot. And then Osiris with her, you know, immortality in a sense. So, anyways. Uh, I love this team. This team is a lot of fun. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below, and I'll see you all in the next one. Remember to stand out, be different, have fun, go further beyond in everything that you do. My name's Cody. You call me further. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.